Good evening, hello, and welcome to Midco Sports Live at the Sanford International, presented by Cambria. And the live part of that is true. Uh, we are live here at 7 o'clock on a Tuesday night, but uh, the at Sanford International, at Minnehaha Country Club, you might be able to tell uh, we had some dreaded technical difficulties, so hopefully we'll get back out there live uh, alongside the 18th Fairway tomorrow night. But uh, here in the Midco Sports Network studios tonight, and the tournament really does get going on Wednesday. The gates will open to the public on Wednesday morning at 6 o'clock. And as far as parking and shuttle services, you are asked to park again in the fairgrounds or the Sherman Park Softball Complex and uh, take the shuttle bus from there. The weather, of course, was a bit of a story early today at Minnehaha Country Club. A little rain overnight, heavy downpour for a short time this morning, but by mid-morning, the players able to get out and get onto the practice range. Darren Clark there from Northern Ireland, just turned 50 this month. This will be just the fourth tournament. He has played with the Tour Champions. Vijay Singh is also here working on that silky swing, and Singh has two wins with the Champions this year, right over the top of the flag with that shot. Kent Jones from Albuquerque, New Mexico is here, 51 year old in his second season with the champions. He's got three top 10 finishes this year. We'll hear from him here in a second. Scott Perrell, Olin Brown, all getting some swings in as well on the range uh, late this morning. And today, all these guys just trying to get a feel of things at Minnehaha Country Club. Number one is try to figure out my lines off the, off the tees. You know, um, that's usually my number one thing. I try to find the the best target for me to aim at on every tee, you know, the, on the fours and fives. And then, you know, you try to figure out where are the places you don't want to go. You know, where are the places that you're not going to, maybe you can't make par from, or you're, you know, this is not a good place to, to try to make a birdie from. And, and so that when it comes time in the tournament, you can be aggressive to the spots you know you need to go to, you know, to shoot low scores. Well, just try to see the course, try to figure out um, a little bit of strategy, what clubs you're going to hit off the tees and, you know, how the course plays. And then probably the biggest thing is the greens. Um, getting a look at the greens and, uh, you know, and just trying to map out how, you know, the strategy for the course, um, which will be important today because because of the forecast looking like could get some rain the next couple of days and maybe not have a chance to play. You look at the yardage book, you look at the, especially the greens. The greens are the first thing you take a look at to see how much slope was on them. And basically when we play a practice round, we look to see where we can afford to miss the green. So it's not always the good shots you're looking for, but it's also looking around the greens and paying attention to where, where's the smart play if you're out of position off the tee or whatever, and that's what we look for. He kind of sounds like Thor, but Darren Clark uh, just turned 50 this year, about 35 days ago uh, last month, and he is in his first year with the Champions Tour this year. Great to have him here. A lot of the Champions events are played on courses, though, that these guys have played before in their younger days when they were on the regular PGA Tour. Mini Ha Ha Country Club, though, has some quirks and some secrets that these guys are going to have to learn quickly over the next couple of days, and uh, adaptation is one thing that they are very good at. Well, some of the players did get out and actually play practice rounds this, staff, uh, this afternoon. Got out on these greens. They got to decide whether they want to try and hit it over the water on that tee shot on the number one hole. And uh, got to measure the speed and the slope on these tricky greens. Although they will be a little quicker and slicker, hopefully by the time the tournament gets around to starting on Friday. And uh, here's some thoughts on the greens from a couple of the pros that played them this afternoon. It's unbelievable, a couple up and down, you know. Uh, shape is incredible, nice, and uh, it's the green a little tricky because many big greens and a lot of break. That's you have to control because the green is not so slow, the green is very fast. I think so, very surprised for all players play something the different golf courses. I think so, so it's good. I could see how that would be the case. I mean, they're rolling nicely, they're fast, they got some pitch and slope, so you know, you just got to be careful and pay attention to where you're hitting and where you're putting from. But they're quick, for sure, they roll out nicely, and there's some slope, so you just got to pay attention to, to where, where you hit them. But yeah, I don't mind them, they're fine. It's going to be so fun to watch these guys put these greens uh, when the tournament gets started on Friday. So we know that Darren Clark is here. Uh, we saw VJ Singh. You saw John Daly was on the course today, still kind of testing out his back and his knees to see if he's going to play this weekend. We think he is going to be a go when the tournament does get started on Friday. And some of the other notable names that will join those guys, David Toms uh, from Louisiana. 
moved up to fifth in the Charles Schwab Cup standings after a tie for fifth last weekend at the Ally Challenge in Michigan. Toms has won the PGA Championship in his career, beat Phil Mickelson by one shot back in 2001. Toms won the Senior uh, U.S. Open Championship this year and the $720,000 first place check that goes with that. So David Toms is here. Steve Stricker will be here coming in on Wednesday, I believe. He's got two wins with the champions this year, and he is a 12-time winner on the PGA Tour. His last PGA victory was not that long ago in 2012. Stricker had his best year in 2009 when he got to number two in the world golf rankings behind Tiger Woods back in 2009. Tom Lehman did get to number one in the world in 1996, and that is the year he won the Open Championship, the British Open, that is. Uh, Lehman was named PGA Player of the Year in 1996. He has one win with the champions this year, 11 total wins since he turned 50 and joined the champions. Uh, Lehman is from Minnesota, played for the Gophers at the University of Minnesota, but now lives in Scottsdale, Arizona. And the biggest hitter on tour right now is not John Daly, it is... Kenny Perry, and he is playing this week one of the most unique swings that you will probably ever see, but he can hammer it. Kenny Perry, number one in driving distance with an average of better than 302 yards per poke so far. Perry has 10 career champions wins. Uh, he won the 3M championship in Minnesota last month with a three-day total of 21 under par in that tournament that included a 12 under 60 in the second round for Kenny Perry. These guys are good, and these guys are serious golfers, and serious golfers are notoriously known for wanting to have the latest and the greatest and the best when it comes to equipment, and there are guys on the grounds this week that can help them add a different shaft to the driver, uh, adjust those big, goofy, adjustable driver heads that you see nowadays. Uh, pretty much anything that the players need, these guys are there for them, help them get a grip on whatever is gonna help them get the best grip and the best chance to win this weekend. Today and the next few days are the time to tinker and the club fitting trailer was hopping today, helping the champions try to get that perfect balance. They wanna get a feel for the golf course first and then they might have to tweak or change something you know, that fits the golf course, whether it's you know, taking a five wood out and adding a rescue or hybrid or, or you know, anything like that. I change the lofts or, or bounce on their wedges um, just kind of how they're going to play the golf course, um, they're, they're going to change uh, to fit it. All right, uh, when we come back here on Midco Sports, not live, but uh, at the Sanford International, and a great story on a man at Minnehaha responsible for getting the golf tournament, uh, golf course in tournament condition. He's had experience doing that at a pretty famous course he was in charge of before he came to Sioux Falls. Midco Sports Network, live from the Sanford International, is sponsored by Sanford Power Golf Academy. And welcome back to our Midco Sports Network coverage of the Sanford International, presented by Cambria. The tournament gets started uh, at Minnehaha Country Club on Friday. Well, David Swift is the grounds superintendent at Minnehaha Country Club. He's the guy in charge of making sure the greens are perfect and the fairways are fair and the grass in the rough is not too high. And of course, getting it all ready for the PGA Champions this week. But Swift has plenty of experience prepping courses for big events. Here is Max Jensen with the story. To say David Swift has seen a thing or two when it comes to tournament golf might be an understatement. I've worked on nine different golf courses in five states and two countries. And, and my previous golf course was uh, Whistling Straits in Kohler, Wisconsin. That's the same Whistling Straits that's hosted three PGA Championships, a course many of the players at the Sanford International played during the 2007 U.S. Senior Open and will host the Ryder Cup in 2020. Well, Swift was in charge of that very course before moving to Sioux Falls in Minnehaha. This was a nice change of pace. It was, it was going to be great, you know, go to Sioux Falls. They're not going to have any big tournaments or anything like that. And here we are now. We're having a senior, senior tour event for the next five years. But it's a new challenge that Swift is embracing because getting a course like Minnehaha ready for tournament play is a little more unique than a course like Whistling Straits. At the major championship venue, especially with Kohler, you know, being a you know, destination resort course, Everybody comes out and they, you know, they want to play the PGA Championship course and they want it to be in PGA Championship condition. And at the Country Club, it's pretty laid back. 
you know, it, men's day is men's day and we get the greens, greens real fast and we prep the golf course for men's day and then there's a few other days of the week that are pretty, pretty laid back and pretty quiet and then all of a sudden they show up at noon on Friday and it's jam packed. So we have a lot more time to maintain the golf course and play the weather and when, when they're coming out, when the members want to come out and play, we usually have an opportunity to give them what the, you know, the product that they want. Whether he is maintaining a course that has hosted major championships, playing just shy of 7,600 yards, or making the necessary adjustments to the country club that has been in Central Sioux Falls since the early 1900s, Swift said he is good right where he is at. I'm happy every day that I get to go work at a golf course and watch the sunrise on a golf course. That's kind of, that's the secret. We don't tell you how great it is. But hosting a tournament, um, that's, it's, it's a very satisfying experience, whether it you know, PGA Tour event or a major championship, but I get just as much satisfaction with the group I get to play with a couple times a week. And when I know the golf course is in, in pretty good shape or in tournament condition, that's just as satisfying as anything. And some work for David and his guys, some extra work with the rains uh, last night and this morning. But Swift and his crew have had Minnehaha in tournament condition really all summer for the last couple of months. And here is one other little nugget from David on the sometimes controversial subject of how high, how long should the grass be in the rough just off the fairways and the greens. And here is the answer he says he gave when the PGA people asked about it. When they first came out, they're you know they're like, okay, we got an old country club, we got thick rough, a lot of trees, a lot of shade. At what at what rough height do the members start chirping? And I think we said you know about two and a half inches when they start chir chirping. And uh, they said, okay, we'll have it at three inches. And this year, this year with the wet weather, three inches is going to be difficult. I mean that's just that's just thick, old country club turf, you know, thick and just thick. And uh, on a normal August or September in Sioux Falls, we're a little drier and three inches, it's thick, it's you know three inches in height, but you can advance the ball and you can usually find the ball pretty easy. This year with the weather, it's been a little more difficult. Just thick, and uh, those are the things that a superintendent has to seriously deal with because uh, members and players get excited about it. They did settle on precisely two and three quarters inches long in the rough, and uh, if they can get the mowers out on it with all of the rain uh, forecast in the next two days in the Sioux Falls area. All right, back out on the course, uh, coming up next, a drone's eye view of hole number seven. Is it a par five or a par four? Club Pro Mickey Finn will answer that and how the seventh will be one of the most entertaining tests in the tournament. Welcome back. The Sanford International presented by Cambria gets started on Friday, first round Friday at uh, Minnehaha Country Club in Sioux Falls. And time for some course management. We got together with Mickey Finn, the PGA Pro at Minnehaha and picked out four holes that will play a big part in the Sanford International Tournament. Holes that will have a wide range of scores because of the risk and reward that they present. And tonight we take you out to number seven. It's a par five for the members. It'll play a par four for the pros and it features one of the nastiest, most tilted greens on the golf course. We play it as a par five on a normal day. Uh, the bunker that you see on the, the left hand, golfer's left on the, the hole, that's going to be, they're, they're going to play with that a little bit. You want to be on the right hand side. Uh, if, you, if you really wanted to, uh, some of the guys like Mr. Daly will probably uh, flirt with that left side and, and flying that bunker. There's really never a level spot in the fairway, but uh, no big mounding or anything like that. It's fairly level, uh, hitting a long to mid iron into the green. They want the guys to hit driver, um, you know, whether it be on a par five or a par four, they're trying to put driver in, in the player's hands. Uh, test them a little bit, you know, the, the less loft, the longer club makes it a little bit harder to swing, but at their level, they're, they're pretty doggone good. 185 to 190 yard uh, to an elevated green, as you can see behind me. Uh, it's designed for us and, and for most players as a par five. Uh, so it's a three shot hole, should be hitting a short iron. Well, now they're hitting a mid iron to uh, a long par four uh, that again is built to receive wedges and those type of things. So they're gonna be flying five irons, six irons. Uh, some of the guys might push it up a little bit further and hit an eight iron or nine iron, it just depending upon the wind. Uh, and then it'll be a little bit more enjoyable to watch the ball spin off the greens. But uh, uh, 
Front to back is where you want to miss the ball here. You do not want to go over, and you, left and right just makes your putts incredibly hard. Just to kind of give you an idea of a, of a putt that I want to end level with me, I have to give it probably eight to nine feet of break to eventually make its way back down to me. So uh, as, as we watch, watch the ball, and it continues to go. Now this is at the beginning of the morning at about 10 and a half speed. You add, a, get it up to 11, those, those are all in inches. So when we start talking about 10 and a half to 11 and a half, 11 two, uh, that ball probably would have chased off another eight feet and been off the green. So uh, proximity to the pin is, is put at a, a extreme high. Uh, down into the valley and then you go back up to the green on number seven and if you go over the green on this hole you are really in trouble trying to get it back onto that surface that is really slippery going away from you from the back of the green and one hole that Mickey thinks uh, that might or most likely will play over par when the tournament gets started on Friday. And uh, right behind seven green, where we just showed you, by the way, is a great spot to watch. You get seven green there, you get the eighth tee, you get number nine, the fairway going away from you. You can see them all from there, and you get the chipping and the putting area all from that vantage point behind number seven at Minnehaha Country Club. All right, up next, Andy North and his role as the host of this big party and why Saturday is going to be so much fun. And if you're looking for autographs this week, we got some tips and some rules for you. Midco Sports Network, live from the Sanford International, is sponsored by Sanford Power Golf Academy. And uh, welcome back. We are live here talking about the Sanford International. Had some uh, technical difficulties out at Minnehaha Country Club. So in our studios here in Sioux Falls, hope to get back uh, out beside the 18th fairway at Minnehaha on Wednesday night. Anyway, he is the golden bear, but he is also the goat, the greatest of all time. And Jack Nicholas will be here this weekend to play nine holes with Andy North and uh, two other legends of the game. Here is North on his role as the tournament host and how much fun is coming up in the next five days. Well, it's going to be a big party. Uh, we know that. Um, we're just trying to help the guys if they need anything and, and you know, be around. I'm going to play in the Pro-Am both Wednesday and Thursday and then we got four of us that are going to do this uh, legend series as the last the leaders make the turn on Saturday. Dave Stockton, uh, Graham Marsh, Jack Nichols and I will fill in a foursome behind that and do a little deal after that. So hopefully we'll have a lot of people out here Saturday afternoon. Not a lot of chances to get to see Jack Nichols play and it'll be fun to be part of it. And again, that is a Saturday afternoon for the Legends. And they did announce today that Jack Nicholas will be here a day early. He will be here on Friday to join Andy North for the opening ceremonies for the tournament. That will be at 10 a.m. on Friday on the first tee at Minnehaha Country Club. Well, when you do come out to watch the tournament, a few things to remember. Some of the spectator tips. Uh, if you want to get player autographs, Wednesday and Thursday are the best opportunities to do that. Those are the Pro-Am days, and it's going to be rainy. These Pro-Ams might not happen, but anyway, if you're looking for autographs, those are the best days to do it. There are some uh, designated spots. There is a Shields autograph zone on hole number 18 or near number hole 18. Around the practice areas are a good spot, and again, don't interrupt the player's practice session, but wait until they make their way out of the practice area, and that is a good spot to get autographs. And as players walk from the green to the tees on uh, Pro-Am days, and those are, again, Wednesday and Thursday if they do not get rained out, but those are three very good spots right there over the next two days to get autographs. And again, some tournament etiquette. The Committee would like you to know, walk carefully, do not run on the course, kind of like the same thing at the swimming pool, stay behind the ropes, follow the marshal's directions, do not cross the fairways except in designated crosswalk areas, doesn't seem like a big deal, but it is, and remain silent and in one location until the players have uh, finished that hole. Again, uh, if the players are walking, you can walk and move. If the players are still, you should be as well. Just some tips for the tournament and uh, the Pro-Ams to get started on Wednesday and Thursday. All right, when we come back, some interesting numbers and the connection between the PGA Tour money list from 1998 and the tournament held this week at the Sanford International and the players who made an appearance in a very famous golf movie from 1996. 
All right, welcome back to Sanford International. Get started on Friday at Minnehaha Country Club. And uh, take a look at this. This is the official year-end money list from the PGA Tour 20 years ago, 1998. David Duvall, VJ Singh, Jim Furyk, Tiger in the top four. Mark O'Meara was seventh that year. Kalkovecchia, Stricker, Parnovic all in the top 15. All those guys are playing here this week in Sioux Falls. Singh, Kalkovecchia, Stricker, Parnovic. In fact, nine of the guys who finished in the top 20 on the money list in 1998 are entered in the Sanford International. That is pretty cool. And I thought this was too. If you were over the age of 25 and a golf fan, you've probably seen the movie Tin Cup. All of these guys were in that movie and they are all here this weekend to play. Gary McCord, Corey Pavin was one of the guys walking down the fairway asking who is Roy McAvoy. There's the scene on the practice range, the famous line from Romeo the Caddy about Chili Peppers and Lee Jansen. Uh, Billy Mayfair was in that scene as well. Jeff Maggart, Tommy Armour III, both in that movie, both playing here uh, this week as well. And again, the uh, gates open at six o'clock on Wednesday morning for the Sanford International. Uh, the Midco Pro-Am is scheduled for the morning and the afternoon. There's a seven o'clock session and a noon session. Again, that is weather permitting. Andy North will join us uh, here for the show tomorrow and Saturday and Sunday. There are press conferences with Tom Byram, David Toms, and Steve Stricker on Wednesday. We'll have those on the show and we will see you then.